I don't know what happened in this game yet. I have avoided the result once again because I just go into the Smog Tours Discord server where they announce that um, that a game's happening, and they just provide the link to the game on Smog Tours, and then the Im already embedded is a link to the replay, and it's great because I can just uh, click on that. And that way I can see the game, like so, without knowing the result. So, I don't know what happens in this one, but I have high expectations, because, you know, people were talking about it, like something dramatic happened, like, and, you know, I think someone was talking about something fucked up happened in it, and I don't even know what that could mean. So, uh, I'm kind of excited. In that regard, anyway. So we got a Heatran lead against a Bronzong lead. I don't know if this is going to be Akazong or it's going to be Heatproof Zong, which is basically a, uh, a Metagross lead. Not quite a Metagross, but it's one that gets to run Akka and another berry at the same time, whether it's Lum or Custap. So Heatran, whether it's you know more traditional Rocks lead or a Spadef uh, Heatran that just leads off and pretends to be another Heatran on turn one. Uh, uh, or specs, you know, uh, so any of these Bronzong can probably do reasonably well against, I, I guess I'm, uh, overlooking the much more obvious idea that this is just a hardcore stall team with a Bronzong lead, uh, cause I'm thinking more back when, uh, people were using more offensive Zongs, but now Zongs most defining trait by far, as opposed to the days of offensive trick room and, you know, utility. I still like Trick Choice Band, but nowadays it's just, you know, a, another levitating Pokemon on stall, you know, in the uh, ongoing war on spikes. So, uh, Heatran lead will generally signify more of an offensive team, so we could be in for offense against stall, which is always interesting, but there are already way too many permutations to go through. So, there's the rocks, and there's the EQ, and it's a Shuka Trick. Wow! That's a throwback. That hasn't been seen regularly in a very long time. So that uh, that's on EQing makes me think it is likelier to be. It still could go either way, but it's likelier to be a an offensive Zong. Also, and this might sound weird, but it's because it did more than half to Heatran with the EQ. And uh, bulky Zong does not do over a hundred percent regularly anyway to Heatran. I mean, it could be a uh, minus defense nature on Heatran, uh, which could push it over the edge, but you know, j bulkier Zongs do not have the strength to f KO Heatran with EQ from full, uh, regularly anyway, uh, which seems crazy, but hey, Heatran's bulky. So that makes me think attack investment, Bronzong, so more offensive variant, variant, and uh, the other thing is that uh, defensive Bronzong is a lot less, a million times less likely, this is probably the bigger thing, it's a million times less likely to stay in because, oh, the Heatran is specs lead and I just lost my Bronzong on the first team when I have a fully healthy stall team. No, absolutely not. So I, I am thinking this is an offensive Zong more. There's Breloom, gonna EQ, or Rocks, great, uh, great Rock there because it's, uh, the Heatran, uh, is not going to be Okoing Zong unless it's Life Orb. Well, it's not going to be Life Orb Overheat, pardon me. <laughs> it's going to be that or uh, even, you know, regular Overheat. Probably, you know, Piteous knows something is up at this point for those reasons uh, that were just listed. So, Miss Heatran is not going to KO the Zong in one, so he just wants to preserve it. And uh, that was a very heads up Stealth Rock from Dridri, who, honestly, I, I don't know Dridri as a player at all, so I have no authorial context to put anything he does in. They do in. So, in comes uh, Breloom, and that might not necessarily be good, because, again, this could be a heatproof Zong with Lum, so it could just get blown up. But then again, the, the Breloom could substitute, and it could blow up into nothing. But that's rare. Oh, yep, there's Lum. Uh, yeah, sub Loom is rare nowadays. Is it going to get blown up? Yeah, it is. Because uh, sub is now more of a... It's still a great set, of course, but it's more of a luxury so yeah, Heatproof Lumzong does exactly what it uh, likes doing. So in comes Rachi, because uh, Rachi can 1v1 a lot of things on a double down. And better to not you know, throw in the weakened Heatran 
which can uh, potentially get. <sighs> I'm sorry, my head's a little fucked up right now. Uh, which can potentially just get picked off by a lot of things, and get uh, and just be a waste. And then you know you're down five four very early on, as opposed to Jirachi, which can be a million different things. And uh, one of the things on my mind right now is Grass Knot, whether it's a mix set or a Calm Mindset, which could mess up the Swampert something awful. And you know that that Bronzong put in a lot of work that uh that basically a two-for-one trade, or very close to it. You know, and removing Bro uh, Breloom like that also makes Swampert a perfect candidate to switch into, because it's not like it's going to be Breloom plus a bunch of other Pokemon that deal with Swampert very well on an offensive team. And I like uh, offensive Swampert without rocks, uh, be so, you know, to free up the, ma the most of its offensive potential, and I like Bronzong there. As uh, to enable that, so in comes this. It's not going to be grass nodding. Instead, Gara is going to come in. This is a very pity style team. Protect. Okay, that's very cool, and that makes me think that there's a Magnezone. Uh, because the protect Swampert on an offensive team like this, because that Bronzong does signify offense. It makes me think. What's the best set for that? Waterfall, EQ, Ice Punch, Protect. It's a great set. But you either need Magnazone or some serious, serious anti scarm technology. And given the existence of lead Bronzong, which is one of the most scarm, pro scarm prone Pokemon there is, uh, then it makes me think, yeah, there's going to be a zone here. And yeah, Gera comes in, shows lefties. So it's not going to be whacking or anything. But that's good because no sand, so it's healing off rocks a little bit. It's going to completely dominate the Pert here. And, uh, of course, you know, Dridri is going to have a Gyarados answer. And it's going to be Rotom. All right. And that's a great move on uh, Pidius's end. A lot of players nowadays, I think, they fall into that DD immediately trap because it lets you get more forceful against things that might try to switch in and deal with you one-on-one, -on -one, like Breloom or Bulky Jirachi. But a lot of the time, you know, especially offensive teams, they're not going to have that kind of flexibility. Or even if they try to pivot around you with things like, you know, their own Gyarados or something, rather than, you know, commit to the sweep or do no damage, just throw that waterfall out. That was a really nice move. And, uh, I mean, it can be tough. You know, it's very tempting to go for that DD. Because it's, otherwise, you know, with that Stealth Rock weakness ramping up, then you feel like you're not getting much out of gear. <laughs> you know, some games, you just need it for that defensive utility, I get it. But it's, you try to just take whatever little chip you can get, because, you know, late in the game, you're going to you know, regret only having clicked DD and not done any damage. So, yeah, that was a really good waterfall, especially because it does, you know, exactly what it did there. And if Rotom is the answer, I assume a Scarf Rotom. I guess it could be Lefties, but... No, but it's... Well, I guess it doesn't have to be Scarf because it doesn't have Lefties either. But it's the most common choice. And if the answer is going to be, a, you know, a, an offensive Rotom like this one, and uh, you're going to get another opportunity against that Pert later on for sure, so you can preserve that gear for a sweep later as opposed to DDing and being chased out. And So great double there. Uh, not letting... Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Yeah, that's classic. You know, T-Tar comes in against Rotom, but now here comes Swampert to take advantage of... God, and that Breloom uh, being alive would have been very, very different. So that's a nice move there uh, from Piteous just to get some chunk on the... Um, on the pert because he knows it's offensive so his crunch is going to hit fairly decently and it does you know around 40 and this is why protect is so good on these offensive purse if you can afford it uh because it's going to uh because suddenly you know it's hit taking ability just increases so 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 much uh when you don't have that bulk that you know tank pert relies on so yeah uh let's see the Ice Punch, it's not really about the Ice Punch uh, not damaging Gera. It's more about getting something out of that one-on-one -on -one against the Pert. Uh, I mean, there's also, you know, the temptation to lock, not let Gera in again. But Gera is a lot more manageable now. Not not just that it's taking South Rock, but now Sand is up, so it's not healing uh, passively anymore. You know, it got from 75 to 88. Uh, through a couple of lefties turns, but now, you know, it's going to come in, take 25, and it's not getting that back. So, barring, you know, Healing Wish. So, that Crunch, I mean, you can try it again, but nope, here comes Gera, and 
The, the thing is, though, like that Gera is still, and there's a Waterfall, uh, nicely done to hit. Actually, it makes me wonder. I think Waterfall was probably the better move against the Swamper, or uh, against the Swamper, against the Titar, because it's not like Ice Punch does that much more to Gera, and you do both. I guess he just wasn't thinking, hey, that uh, that Titar might stay in. <laughs> but yeah, even just spamming Waterfall here is going to be fairly effective. Well. Maybe not. And there's Latias. Now I'm thinking, you know, with the uh, with the Rotom, I'm wondering if the Magna Zone is there. Not that Rotom Zone can't be used on the same team, but and uh, th that's a very nice DD on Pitius's end to force the issue in case Swampert tried to stay in and slug it out. Uh, that would you know, put it a lot more in his favor uh, because he's not going to be waterfalling him repeatedly into torrent range or something. I mean, I think based on the. Mm, no, he could just DD twice, maybe, in that case, yeah. As opposed to... Hmm, maybe Waterfall was better again. But um, the reason why DD also works is not just because it's effective against Swampert if Swampert stays in, you know, especially if it protects. I mean, that would have been really, you know, uh, way too risky. But in the event that uh, Piteous switch or Piteous, uh, Dredri switches, then the answer's probably not going to be Rotom. It's going to be something else because as Rotom can just switch in and die to Waterfall, so something else might come in to try and absorb the Waterfall and you know limit Garrett to one DD so that Rotom can still revenge kill it. Worst case, and that's exactly what this Latias does. And now Garrett can take it out with a plus one Ice Fang. Although the lefties make me think that's going to be oh that does have some bulk and it gets T Wave. All right, it's a bulky Latias. God, that, that, <laughs> there's got to be a zone there. This team is not a, a fan of. The Skarmory, so it's now going to try and recover Ice Fangs through Para. It's, you know, Ice Fangs out damaging recover a little. There's Ice Beam, and down it goes. But the Gara has been taken out. But you know, it took out Latias with it, so that's much better. And it chunked a huge uh, piece of damage onto Rotom too. So, I mean, the bigger issue here is going to be the Swampert. But it's not like Gara did nothing. So it's up to Piteous to somehow... I mean, having Protect is really going to make it hard. You can't muscle your way through it nearly as well now. So I really like that choice. But, yeah, uh, I mean, he brought Rotom to near death, and he took out Latias, so that's good. It's just a matter of is any... Even, oh, that's a great Protect, getting that extra, um, extra lefties. I really like that. Yeah, advanced style, just wrenching every bit of recovery you can out of this Swampert. In comes Heatran again. Is he going to boom? I mean, there's so. This could go so spectacularly wrong. I mean, props for Fire Blasting there. That's a tough move to make because he's. Uh, he's so. He's clearly so desperate against this uh, uh, Swampert. And, you know, this is not 2010, so I do not really believe that there's any possibility of this being Rocks, Fire Blast, EP, or uh, Earth Power, and HP Grass. So. And the HP Grass Explosion sets, you know, Rocks, Fire, HP Grass, Boom, then those are, you know, on Pasho. Not that they couldn't be on Shuka feasibly, but it just seems very unlikely. So you're not fooling anyone into thinking, oh, I'm going to Fire Blast, and then I'm going to pop the HP Grass. No, it's Fire Blast so I can pop the Explosion. And that Protect was very safe, because now the Explosion is still a tough move to make. And with Gera out of the picture, you are more... And, you know, Titar still being in health to pursue you. Uh, I can't really switch into two T-Bolts well from 52. Uh, it, it depends on the spread, I guess. Uh, so that one's more up in the air. But yeah, Rotom is not as valuable now. And the Swamper clearly is valuable. So if I'm Dridri, and I, I assume there's going to be some more speed here. So preserve that Swamper. Do not risk that Swamper. And it's clearly you know, so important. And just go to the Rotom. And if it gets Fire Blast, it gets Fire Blast. And then you revenge kill it with something else. The Heatran. You know, as for the last, I think uh, Latias is a very likely choice. It ties a lot together. Uh, Starmie is also feasible, but I think Latias is more important. A Scarf Latias, because otherwise Scarf Flygon is just going to be a tear. Something needs to deal with the Scarf Flygon problem here, basically. You know, Loom Gera can do it. I mean, and the Drachi might be Shuka, so that also might help. But, you know, wh whatever it is, it has to... I think it has to tie... And, I mean, the T-Shark could be Shuka for all we know. But 
there has to be some sort of scarf flag on plan, and I think it is likely that that last does that in some capacity, especially because Latias does so much for this team in general, you know, with the scarf healing wish and the general revenge killing of anything scary. So, uh, yeah. And, again, that's not something that you really want to chuck in a Swampert, especially with two unrevealed Pokemon. So, I think, uh, Rotom... Oh, Dragonite's gonna come in here. Alright, I can see that choice. And another Fire... That's a great move from Piteous. Uh, if the Dragonite is faster... What? But, 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 don't... Okay, I didn't want to see the next turn yet. Okay, so we know Piteous switched to T-Tar. Okay. But I was gonna say, if the D-Knight is faster, that actually checks it. And the choice is made here, and that, I mean, that is last has to be a Magnezone. I mean, come on. The double dragon here. Uh, so if the D-Knight is faster, like if it's Jolly DD, or if it's... I mean, I, I guess uh, nowadays Heatran is a lot likelier to be plus special attack, so you could even reasonably expect an Adamant D-Knight to outspeed it. And it could just be, you know, DD or Choice Band. Uh, if it's if you're expecting Jolly, though, it's going to be DD. I mean, Jolly Choice Band, I think, is just... You're not doing what you're supposed to most of the time well enough. You know, you got to focus on what you're best at. So, uh, yeah, so that was, he decided if I fire... If, I get Fire Blasted. Also, he can take two Fire Blasts. So it might not even necessarily be a matter of um, outspeeding. As you saw, the first one did 34. The first Fire Blast did 34, and now he's at 36. So uh, you can take one, take out the Heatran, and then Swampert's sitting pretty. And yeah, I think the last also has to be Magnazone, or I don't know, a mixed T-Tar or something. Just because other Latias, or other Dragon moves, or I mean, or some kind of Jirachi or Metagross or something. I don't know, but it has to be some sort of um, Skarm Buster. But yeah, I think it, it's got to be that, you know, funky steel of some kind that deals with stall, or a, a mixed T-Tar, simply because Bronzong is a lead with no leftovers, and there's no other Dragon Resist. So, you do not want to collapse that Scarf Latias. So, you know, keeping this idea in mind, the D-Knight was uh, thrown in there because if it gets boomed, it gets boomed because I'm expecting that Scarf D-Knight last and... Uh, Scarf D-Knight. Scarf Latias last and D-Knight is going to be less valuable against that. You know, as opposed to sacking Rotom and then preserving a D-Knight, which... Not that Rotom beats Scarf Latias, uh, but uh, Rotom also takes on Jirachi better. So... Yeah, I and uh, Rotom doesn't. And the, uh, the other reason it's not just about you know preserving one over the other, but it's that D Knight forces Heatran to sacrifice itself. If you're if you're gonna lose something to the Heatran on this turn, it's because the Heatran also took itself out, right? Whereas if you go to Rotom and you, I mean, you could potentially kill the Heatran for nothing if it booms, but if it does kill something on your team, it did so and it's still alive. So. Uh, the D-Knight is like, alright, look, either I avoid a KO, or I bring the Heatran down with me. So, nice move. So, uh, T-Tar is going to get sacked here, and they're super power, so CB for sure. We see Chopple on the T-Tar, alright, so that's not helping deal with the Scarf Flygon. And now I assume the Rachi is going to come in, and I don't know what is... Uh, <laughs> I don't think the Rachi is going to be Scarf. That's very... I mean, never say never, right? But... I don't know. The last, I guess, if the Scarf Rachi, then it could be a mixed Flygon last, which would also help further with stall. Uh, and you just rely on resistances for opposing Scarf Flygon. But yeah, this Rachi, if it's you know something more mixed or Calm Mind, Calm Mind poses a pretty big threat here, actually. So, oh, it's it's not Choice Band. I wait. I didn't wait till for the end of the turn. It lost health. It's Life Orb, so it's mixed. So. Okay, so it being mixed Dragonite and not all-out physical n means that the Magnezone is actually far less likely. I still think it's going to be a Steel Last, though. Or at least a T-Tar for the purpose of absorbing Latias, although Steel helping for you know other uh, dragons, you know, like Flygon, D-Knight, once uh, your Bronzong has blown itself up, as is very likely. So in comes the Rachi. It cannot set up Calm Mind here safely, and we're going to reveal what it is. Goes for Extreme Speed just for the little bit of chip, nicely done, and it's Psychic. Okay, so it could be a mix set with Psychic, but it is far, far, far likelier. There's Metagross. Okay, cool. Uh, if this is if this agility is, then that's tough. Um, even if it is Shukarachi. Actually, no, if it is Shukarachi, it's, ma it's manageable. Well, I guess it's not about the Metagross itself. But yeah, it's far li uh, likelier that it is going to be um, 
offense or call mind Jachi. Anyway, so it's not about the fact that uh, that Metagross might win on its own because it's if it is a it's unless it's Life Orb, then it's probably not going to KO. Well, actually, I might be misremembering. I think it's probably a roll against this Jirachi to KO it with EQ even without a Shuka Berry. And it's going to have HP Fire or Ground. So it, it, I guess there's also the, the question of can the Jirachi 2 KO it back, though. But even if Jirachi does beat this Metagross 101, which is a big if, I, I don't think it's going to be quite strong enough. To say nothing of the fact that the Agility Gross could also have... I guess it could also be Trick Iron Ball. But, um, but yeah, to say nothing of the fact that the Agility Gross could also have Shuka or Akka itself to really hammer home that fa the idea that Jirachi is not too KOing it. But what I'm really thinking about here is that whether whatever kind of Agility Gross it is, or if it's Trick Iron Ball, that, or even if it's just like Protect Lefties or something, although I think that's very unlikely. Uh, what I think the problem is going to be that afterwards Jirachi is going to be in Rotom range, and, well, actually, no, I, I I take it back, because after, let's say Metagross goes down, then uh, Rotom go, comes in, and then Latias switches in, and then Drake goes. Yeah, I know, suddenly I think this is feasible. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I, I can see that. But, uh, oh, it's not Latias, it's Rotom. Okay, Rotom is much better at dealing with Metagross, although if it's no bulk and no overheat. Oh, it's Zen Headbutt. That did a lot. It is overheat, and it just barely lives. Oh, man. Overheat is such a great move on Scarf Rotom, uh, because for spe specifically for stuff like this, and, you know, hitting Jirachi harder, as uh, and Grasses as well. But, yeah, that's... Zen Headbutt is a very forgotten coverage choice on uh, Metagross for this exact reason. Uh, or, it's forgotten because it's hard to fit everything, but it's very good for this exact reason. And Zapdos and Gyarados... Uh, oh, Koing Loom doesn't hurt, but yeah, I was gonna say, even regular Scarf Rotom, uh, can struggle, you know, without bulk, to withstand mash with, uh, rocks and sand and no lefties, so, and, you know, no bulk, so, it was already gonna be precarious, but, you know, with Zen Headbutt, it's a lot, uh, a lot riskier, so now, just hope for a Zen miss, nope, hope, uh, EQ doesn't kill the Jirachi, or hope it's Shuka, but I, I think, uh, you know, as the, I think the problem was more, not that the Rotom didn't beat the Metagross, but I don't think that the Jirachi was going to be... Yeah, I, I think Swampert and Rotom were going to win the game anyway. So, uh, Agility Metagross Sweep, you don't see that very much nowadays. It's a great Pokemon. Glad to see it coming back. So, nice game to both of them. I'm a little disappointed in the people who hyped this up as being some sort of spectacular fuck up of shameful proportions uh but you know i'm also glad for the integrity of dpp that that did not happen anyway so nice game uh thanks guys for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one